Hi, everyone. Um, very excited to be here. How many of you know, ha heard about Blackthorn? Can you guys raise your hand? I think maybe 20% of the people. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys will learn more after this session, hopefully. And um, so a little bit uh, about the Blackthorn is Blackthorn, we're a biopharma company primarily based on, uh, out of San Francisco. We focus on R&D or anything related to the brain disorders. Think about disorders like Alzheimer, depression. That's what we do. That's our business, do drug development for those uh, disorders. Uh, today, we're gonna cover one unique platform that we are having building over the last uh, year or so, primarily based on uh, AWS. The platform is called Pathfinder. But more important, we're gonna cover how we're using Pathfinder to accelerate the machine learning scale within the Blackthorn. So there is so many things that I can talk about the Blackthorn. Um, at some point in my career, I used to work for Pfizer. Right now, the way I will describe Blackthorn is think about like a, having like a big Pfizer but a small scale. That's the, way, the best way I will describe. But there are three areas that I wanna cover in, as far as Blackthorn. One, our approach is a novel approach where we're looking to bring clinical science and technology in one place. That's something that we believe is unique. The second one, we believe the data is the main asset for the company. So we can do a lot of things, but we don't know the data, and we don't know how to use the data. It's a major challenge for, for our industry. So that then, we're using data and machine learning to solve complex problems that no one has solved before. And uh, we'll cover more of this in, in a second. And also, as a reference, we have multiple uh, clinical programs that are running right now. We have some of them in the early stage, some of them are in phase two, and hopefully we'll make more progress over the next uh, years and months. Um, so as far as the agenda, what I wanna cover today, give you an idea as far as what is the spy funder vision, what are the benefits, why this is important for Blackton and also for the biopharma industry. And then we'll jump into one particular case study, which is really the core of this session. How are we using AWS to accelerate machine learning at scale. I can just tell you when I joined uh, Blackthorn nine months ago uh, versus where we are right now, is when I joined, there was a lot of challenges as far as be able to build machine learning. The data scientists team, they were trying to play with uh, Amazon. They didn't know what to do. And, and you guys will see over the, this slides what are the benefits. And then after the case study, we'll talk about what is next. The thing is in every company, it's always good to know what we have done, what is uh, what the main accomplishment challenges, but also we want to talk about what is the path forward as far as the, the Pathfinder uh, platform. So the way I will describe Pathfinder, think about is like an integrated uh, digital platform. Is uh, if you look at the areas that I will describe is one, through Pathfinder we are able to collect data from multiple sources. So the data could be clinical trials data, it could be instruments data, it could be external data. In the case of the particular case study, we're gonna talk about MRI data. But also we cover, the Pathfinder allows to capture data through audio, video, different data sets. That's the first piece of the, the puzzle of the Pathfinder. The second part of the puzzle is be able to just to bring the data in a manner that is secure and compliant. And when I refer to compliant, think about like a HIPAA, GDPR, Part 11 compliant. I have worked with many companies in the past where companies that bring the data, but they don't know if the data is compliant or not. So our goal is to make it secure and compliant. That's the sec is, uh, is part of the, the second puzzle. And the third piece, which is something that I, I heard in the previous, uh, is from the previous speakers, <coughs> how do we access the data? Which is one of the main principles for Pathfinder is, once the data is on the, in the repository, we're gonna we're enable the access to machine learning scientists to people that are doing analytics, or giving the access right away so that they can do, start doing the analysis without spending weeks or, or months trying to figure out where is the data. So that's kind of like a, one of the main areas that are benefits of the Pathfinder. And the last piece before I move to the next slide is think about this framework making as a, as a service. If we have this integrated digital system as a service, that's something that we can use not just for Blackthorn, but potentially use for other biopharma companies. So the case study that we're gonna cover is something that um, I, I recall when I joined eight months ago. It was the ask is, how can we start, 
how can we build a framework to process MRI data? And is, for some of you are familiar with MRI data, it's quite complex. I didn't know MRI data when I joined, to be honest. But uh, what was the business problem? The business problem is we want to build a platform that is secure, scalable, to process potentially a couple of hundred data sets, thousands, millions. Just in mind, be able to process 300 MRI data sets. It's a lot of data. We're talking about close to uh, gigabytes. If you go to thousands, talking about petabytes. If you go to 10,000, we have close to terabytes or petabytes. So the amount of data is, uh, is enormous. But more important is the second ask, how can we build this platform to support the entire data science pipeline? Meaning the collection of the data, the quality control of the data, the feature extraction, feature engineering of the data, which is the activity that maybe spend, where data scientists spend most of the time, uh, the modeling, the training, and then the insights. That's, you know, it's, for some of you are familiar with machine learning, it's very, very complex process that, by the way, the first time doesn't work, right? You have to try multiple times. That's part of the uh, machine learning. Um, so what I'm gonna describe is, given the problem, what was the solution? The solution, there are three layers that are, is, are part of the solution. The first one is the foundation. Think about it like uh, when you're building the house. If you have a solid foundation, the rest will be secondary. It may not be directly uh, related to machine learning, but that's something you need to have. For the foundation, we have primarily think about components like a security, compliance, monitoring, logging, automation. Components that maybe people will say, well, it doesn't matter, we don't really care. But the reality matters. If you're looking to build a platform scale, that's, a, that's the first thing you have to look, okay? To that end, we look at different options. But we were, uh, we were lucky to find something that at AWS they have, they call it uh, Blueprint uh, uh, Biotech, which is think about some, there are reusable components, reusable templates, that you can just run it and uh, ready to go. For our case, I believe we cover, we're using maybe 80% um, or 70% uh, of those components, and the rest has been customized for Blackthorn. What I can tell you, it saves a lot of time. Okay. So that's the, the foundation. And then on top, before I move to the next slide, we have also the API manager. One decision that we make, a conscious decision that anything that is happening across the platform is API based. Doesn't really matter if we have external, internal component, everything is API. We don't wanna have data scientists or anyone talking about S3 or RDS. We want them to think about APIs. Okay, that's, that's fundamental as part of the foundation. The second layer on the house is, is the data, which is for some of you maybe will be, well, that is very straightforward. I can tell you we're a small company. We are less than 40 people. For the amount of data that we have, we're talking about maybe uh, terabytes or petabytes of data that we have, which is, uh, is impressive. Now, for us to, to manage the data, one thing that we're making is slightly different from the traditional data warehouse, data-like approach is we're using the term of data broker. As you can see on the left side, so any MRI data or audio data is coming, it goes through a data broker. So we're using Apache Kafka to manage that. So what is the reason? The reason is we want, we want to be in a model where we can publish data and we can have subscribers. And the subscriber could be a data lake, it could be analytics, it could be Elasticsearch, it could be a third party, so that way we can reuse the data more and more and more. So that's something kind of like we're breaking the pattern that is on the industry. The second part of the data, as I seen someone may mention, I don't know, it was math, as far as the uh, metadata, the, the catalog. So we have a data lake, we have analytics, we have uh, other components. But one piece that we are adding as a priority is the metadata and the data catalog. The reason why this is important is anything that is happening across the system, we're logging using Elasticsearch we are also writing the same time in the catalog. So that at some point, if the data scientists wanna know what happened with my machine pipeline, the reward, we can basically, we can just give the answers right away in a matter of seconds. In the past it was more, Oscar, we have a problem. Let me figure it out. And maybe it was, uh, it was taking me close to maybe two days to figure out just one problem. So the catalog and the metadata is also very important and is part of the solution. But if we keep evolving the, um, the overall solution, which is part of this uh, decision, is 
you can maybe wondering where is the machine learning? How you guys do machine learning? So think about the third layer on the solution. That's where we have machine learning as a service. Okay, that's a concept we are we're evolving. But the reality is, um, I recall when I joined, we were doing data scientist uh, A. Yeah, he was doing maybe a Python uh, a script. And the second one, uh, data scientist B, he was writing a shell script and using TensorFlow. So what we decide is to containerize every single machine learning model that we have within Blackton. So we're using Docker. And the reason is that, think about we have machine learning models that could be as complex as having a, maybe a 2,000 lines machine learning model for one, okay? Sometimes also what we realized we're using open source that was written maybe 10 years ago. So my first approach was let's try to migrate everything to my, uh, uh, you know, Python. Will never happen. Maybe it will take another 10 years. Okay. So we containerize all of this with Docker. We put all the IP, and that's primarily the, the machine learning factory. One example, let's say we have a QC for MRI. We have maybe a feature extraction for uh, audio data. So that's all the different containers that we have. And then on top, we have the orchestration. Uh, I hear like maybe 10 times AWS Batch. So maybe we are the 11th time. We're using also AWS Batch as well. Uh, but also, we're making something slightly different. Basically, we're using a Python to orchestrate those components. And also, we are also exploring how can we use Kubernetes to orchestrate uh, AWS Batch as well. Okay, so that's kind of like the orchestration, and that's something is, uh, is evolving as, as we speak. And the last layer, which is, um, for me, is the most important one, is the user interface for the data scientists. When I joined, my initial reaction was, uh, he is, the, he is the, cloud, uh, the cloud guy, the guru. I said, well, here is AWS, they have uh, 300 services. Let's give it uh, access to S3, Athena, and data scientists, they were just looking at me like, a, that's great, it didn't work. So our, my approach was to simplify, and right now they have, we have primarily three main components. One is the DS worker. Think about it's an EC2 instance where data scientists, they can use login, they can do all the design, engineering, all the modeling for machine learning. Once we have those uh, components ready, they move to the ML notebook, which is based on the Jupyter and SageMaker. So that's where they can uh, start training the models. And the last, which is something that I also am very excited to share, we have an initial uh, prototype for the PyFinder portal. The PyFinder portal is, we made the decision that it uh, doesn't really matter if you have the executive level, CEO, data scientist, they need to have only one UI. As a data scientist, I can go to the PyFinder portal and I will say, okay, tell me what are the MRIs that we processed last six months. Or tell me what is the largest MRI where we have this pattern. There's just one single uh, portal. When the data scientists run machine learning, also they can go to the PyFinder to find the results. They don't know if the data is re, uh, resigned on the data lake on S3, everything is simple for them. Sometimes, as, as you know, data scientists, they want to go directly to S3. We're trying to prevent to not go through the, uh, those details behind the scenes. And just to summarize, I'm pretty sure you, know, you guys may be wondering, we covered what was the business problem we talk about the solution. And there is many business outcomes, right? If you think about when I joined eight months, uh, nine months ago, there was basically, there was no automation. There was, we have close to maybe 10 data scientists. All of them, they are top in the market. But uh, the results, they were not there. So right now, the, there are three main results. The first one, and that's something more from the business side, we, we were able to build highly predictable ML models by combining audio, video, MRI data, which is something that uh, uh, according to my, uh, the internal team, no one has done it before. And we feel very proud about that. The second one, we were able to build a cost-effective solution using AWS and open source, which is primarily part of what you will see here. This is the, like a high-level uh, representation. But more important <coughs> is the solution that I believe in maybe six months is not gonna work. I'm, you know, maybe in a year we have to change. And that's okay. We 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 believe we make the conscious decision to focus on the 80/20 rule. Let's focus on resolving the problem right now. The solution maybe is 80 uh, percent ready, and the 20 will leave it for the for the for the future. And the last, which is a, a result which I'm very also uh, pleased to share, 
When I joined, um, the initial um, benchmark was to process 300 subjects of MRI, five weeks outside AWS. Again, Elliot, that was not AWS, it was, it was outside, okay? And, and everyone, they were like, a, well, how can we do this in uh, AWS? That's gonna take a couple of weeks, a couple of days. After one month, we brought it down to 10 hours, okay? I can tell you everyone's jumping, oh my God, this is a major milestone, which is, it was a major milestone. For we start going through more of the technical details, working with uh, Paul uh, Underwood and Elliot, and try to figure out how can we bring it down. So we, were, we brought down uh, to one hour, processing 300 subjects in one hour. Some of, for some of you, they are familiar with MRI, they were like, wow, it's, a lot, it's, it's going through really uh, high performance compute environments. And then after that, I said, no, that's not enough. So let's, let's go and start exploring. So then we start also looking at, if we can do 300, what if we run 1,000? And someone most likely will say, well, how about 10,000, right? So it took us a lot of, maybe a, uh, two months to figure out because there are some parameters, there are some settings that needs to be changed on AWS. Uh, some of the containers didn't work. Uh, one thing that I remember, we were trying to use one of the highest computing uh, easy tools from AWS, where our, co our container was too slow because as it was based on the open source that was written 10 years ago, okay? But nevertheless, just in mind, a few weeks ago, we were able to process 10,000 subjects of MRI in one hour. And I believe that this is something we can bring in down to minutes, it's not seconds. Maybe the technology is something we need to adapt, but that's something, that's where we are as far as the, the results. And just to close, um, what I want to cover is, you know, as you see, based on the uh, case study, based on the Pathfinder, we have already proved the concept. We already proved the, the results. And, um, but also we are very ambitious as far as what is next. So there are three areas where we wanna focus uh, moving forward. One is security. We already have a highly secure environment where I believe security is not just one time exercise, it has to be ongoing, right? Right now we're talking about GDPR, HIPAA, Part 11, who knows in the next uh, uh, years, okay? So we're bringing a couple of experts to help us to refine the solution. We are also doing some uh, uh, automation that's compliant using, using machine learning for uh, security. The second one, which is something that uh, uh, some people they challenge maybe, some people they will say, oh, this is too early. For, there are three areas that we're exploring. One is uh, blockchain for data monetization. So just in mind the amount of data we're processing, the amount of partners, the amount of people that are working with the Blackthorn. So we believe that we can monetize the data by using blockchain. Quantum computing, potentially to solve very complex problems on machine learning. And then connected devices. Think about right now in a typical uh, clinical trial, what do you have? You have a mobile app, you have a web application. So we're trying to see how can we use potential Alexa in a clinical trial so that we can also bring some new flavor to the biopharma industry. And the last, which is uh, something uh, we have been working internally is, we're doing a lot of stuff, but what if we bring this together and start building some industry, industry standards, best practices, templates that we can use across for any biotech, biotech company, biopharma. Industry standards across AI, ML, data, because we have all the, the ingredients and we're working very closely with AWS and other partners um, at this moment. As you can see, it's very exciting to see the future, and, uh, and I wish I had more time, but um, uh, I just wanna take a moment just to thank you, Elliot. I don't know how many people thank you, Elliot, but he's a rock star. And I uh, also wanna thank you, Paul, that is, uh, I don't know where's Paul, but he has been working with us you know, very closely, right? And, um, and if anyone would like to learn more about Pathfinder, what are we doing within Blackthorn, feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Thank you. Quick question for Oscar. So you said MRI. Have you started to look at other video formats or imaging formats? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we have pretty, I will say um, across all different data sets, we have close to 20 different data sets, right? 
some of them are a little more complex than others. One example, like, uh, yeah, we have uh, Pablo, he's the uh, uh, head of uh, digital solutions. But one of the main challenges we have is around the privacy. We are taking the, let's say, the image of the person, right? That's when we can capture, but how can we analyze? Right? So, that's, there is, so there are different data sets. But to answer your question, yes, we're doing that. I'm glad that you asked that question. I don't know how many people asked me before, but uh, right now we are basically everything is custom. So we are looking to potentially explore things like a TensorFlow, uh, QBflow, other components. Uh, right now, uh, the, peop the, reason, the reason why we are doing that one is we have close to seven people that are data scientists. There are people that have been working in the past with some of the largest companies that are doing ML, so they know their work pretty well. The second one, when it comes to biopharma, MRI, that's something that uh, even uh, you know, cloud providers, they are not there yet, okay? So if you look at the APIs that maybe uh, AWS has or other partners, they are evolving, but I would love to see at some point potentially having those APIs available for MRIs as well. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you again. Thank you.